Hello everybody. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, uh, this will be my first class with you guys. Uh, this will be a very short recap on the topics of outwelling. So, I'm going to give you a short explanation before we go into much detail aspect of uh, outwelling case studies. So, outwelling is very much related to Ekman dynamics. Okay, we talk about Ekman dynamics. The most important part is wind. So when you have wind along the coastal area, so this is land and ocean. So what happened is, what Ekman Dynamics explain is, if you have wind moving in one direction, the amounts of transport, not current, but actually the water transport is moved in the right direction in the northern hemisphere. Obviously, it will move in the opposite direction in the southern hemisphere, which is to the left. So, what happen? What happen when you have you know, this kind of dynamics? So, if you have a a coastal area with a northward uh, moving uh, wind, so you basically have Ekman transport pushing the water out from the land area. So, what happen is the subsurface water will move up and create an area what we know as outwelling. The global wind stress map, wind stress map shows you the big, uh, you know, the global pattern of wind. So if you look at here, all these major wind system, these five big circles, is actually producing wind uh, outwelling favorable wind. So you look at here in the Indian Ocean. So you have southern hemisphere wind moving to the north, Ekman transport to the left, and you have big outwelling here. Again, in Peru outwelling, you have wind going to the north, Ekman dynamics going to the left, and it creates outwelling, same as here in, uh, in the South Africa. But here to the north, you have wind moving to the south, and then Ekman dynamics to the right. California, California area also say similar, wind moving to the south, and Ekman to the left. So basically, all of these ma are major outwelling systems uh, in the world. So why upwelling is important? Upwelling is very important because of the productivity that it produces in the ocean area. So when you have high productivity in the ocean, so basically you have uh, higher fisheries uh, resources. So that's what happened in the world. So we have around 1 to 2 percent of uh, upwelling areas in the global ocean, but it produced more than 50 percent of fisheries resources. So that's why upwelling is a very important study in oceanography. So there you are, a very short examples of an uh, explanation about upwelling Ekman dynamics. And the next lecture will be focusing on small scale upwelling where we have uh, you know, a very interesting aspect of different upwelling uh, details in different areas. So see you again. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.